Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. Fellow Toastmasters, today I am going to teach you how to walk like a woman. That's right, I'm going to teach all of you, even the gentlemen in the room, so that all of you can walk out of this room today walking like a strong and confident, empowered woman. <laughs> Just what I wanted. Now don't be afraid. I'm not going to make you guys get up here and walk in front of the whole class. I'm going to do that for you. Okay? So just watch. So you may be thinking, well, what does that mean, walking like a woman? I didn't really know either. So last week, I met with our resident etiquette expert, Carrie Glenn, <laughs> and she gave me some really great tips. The first thing you want to think about when you are walking like a woman is your posture. You want to stand up straight and tall, your head up, facing the direction you're traveling, and you want to engage your core, which basically means squeeze your ab muscles like you've got a six pack, even if you don't have one. <laughs> okay? This will make you look like you are strong and confident and assured. The next thing you want to think about is your foot placement. When I walk, my feet tend to kind of go out, my toes point to the edges of the room. Other people are a little bit pigeon toed, they go in. Some people have straight feet. To walk like a woman, one foot must land in front of the other. You need to pretend like you are a model on a catwalk, but just tone it down a little bit. When you walk like this, your hips emphasize your femininity, and naturally, your arms begin to sway, which again shows that you are feminine, but because of your posture, you are still strong and confident. Next, and perhaps most importantly, is your state of mind. You need to think that you are traveling across the room, not stepping, okay? If you're thinking about getting to the next place, you're gonna stomp around the room because you need to get there. You don't wanna do that. You need to be poised and graceful and think about traveling. You're doing a waltz, not stomping, not doing merengue. When you think about these things, it will show with how you walk. And most importantly, in order to walk like a woman, you must be thinking to yourself that you are beautiful. I'm not necessarily talking about the beauty you see in the mirror when you wake up first thing in the morning. I'm talking about what makes you feel beautiful inside. Is it being confident? Is it being intelligent? Having a great sense of humor? It's different for everyone. So you need to figure out what it is that makes you feel beautiful and think about that. Now I'm going to put it all together for you. I am graceful and poised. I am elegant. I am intelligent. I feel confident. And I am not going to fall on my face right now. <laughs> <laughs> this is how you walk like a woman. It's simple. <laughs> it's exhausting. <laughs> it hurts my ankles. My feet are not meant to walk like that. I have terrible posture. Carrie, kudos for making it look as easy as you did. <laughs> so, not all women walk this way. But, I have found that there are some similarities in the way that many women walk, especially compared to men. Because 65% of women in the United States will face some form of street harassment in their lifetime. This can be anything from unwanted attention and catcalls to having somebody follow them while they are walking in public, to having somebody touch them inappropriately, or even to sexual assault. Because of this, and the alarming rate at which it happens, many women come up with strategies on how to walk by themselves so they can remain safe. One of the first ways that I learned to walk like a woman safely is to get rid of these. They're uncomfortable, and I can't move as fast in them. <laughs> so we've got sensible shoes. That way, if I am ever followed when I'm walking to my car late at night, or when I'm out shopping, I can walk a little bit faster, and that can mean the difference between making it home safely and being assaulted in an alley by someone you never have met in your life. Another thing that I have learned to do to walk like a woman is to cover myself up. 
am supposed to, as a woman, cover all the things that make me look feminine or that sexualize me in the eyes of a potential attacker. Because many women who have been sexually assaulted, which is nearly 300,000 women who report it each year in the United States alone, the first question they're asked, well, what were you wearing? As if what that woman was wearing is to blame for what happened to her. One of the other things I learned at a young age is that everything is a weapon. These, in particular. Women will walk with their keys in between their fingers, ready to strike at anyone who comes too close. Other women will use their hands. If you use your hands like claws and you lock them, you can reach forward and poke out, potentially, an attacker's eyes. My best friend started carrying a taser with her in college. So whenever she would go to her car at night, she'd have one hand on her keys, the other hand in her bag, holding onto her taser. Another friend carries pepper spray with her everywhere she goes. So if somebody comes too close, she can spray them right in the eye and run. This is a reality for many women. Two out of three women will face some sort of unwanted attention like this. And fellow Toastmasters, it's time for that to change. Do we want to continue teaching our future generations of women and children that women should be afraid when they go outside? That they need to be responsible for not being attacked? Or do we want to teach all future generations, regardless of their gender identity, that everyone that they come into contact with deserves respect and that unwanted attention is never okay? I think that's a conversation that we need to change and we need to take seriously and it needs to happen today.